everybody, guess what's up and shining? Hey, everything on here, look below the video. I'll put a link to it. You're gonna love this. It's the new one, 2019, and didn't come like that. Y'all stay tuned. Let's see how we did it. We are now going to be installing our five blade GE 500, green energy 500 turbine. Below the video, everybody's where you get them at? Below the video with the upload date. Look, it's got an AliExpress link. I got this in about five days from way the hell over in China, DHL. All right, so now this one here is a 500 watt. You'll see in my previous videos, my three blader kicks royal ass. I mean, it outranks everything. This one has a very, very large PMA in it. So if you want to compare that to one of these that can put out a thousand watts pretty easy, there you go. Pretty substantial, isn't it? So, um, now this is, of course, a Thermodyne, and it is built. This thing here is just tough as nails. So, I want to show you why. Um, this is the one that just came down. Six and a half years. Six years, seven months. This thing has been flying maintenance-free, and I built that whole setup years ago. However, we're going to be installing the five blade five blade hub and all the hardware so what we've got is i've got my very nice trustworthy and i love this thing uh bauer harbor freight chicago rebranded you know how they do it and we're going to be cutting a 38 inch long piece of two inch we will then be going up on top where the two inch comes out the roof and attaching a heavy coupling to it this is for plumbing, which can handle up to 450 PSI WOG, water, oil, gas. Now, we're going to cut that piece, and I'm going to show you how we're going to weld this on. So we're going to be welding that on to this pipe. Now, this is galvanized. So of course, we'll be using a fan to blow away from us, and we're going to do the preheat weld on it. I want you all to watch us do that right quick, and then we're going to get this turbine in the air pretty fast. All right, now, while mounting my pipe and device, you know, cutting it with a porter band, you can be pretty accurate, but you need to be extremely accurate to get your face of your flange mounted on there. So I'm showing you a technique. It's getting a regular band and get a quality one because some of them will be crooked if you're not. And uh, I will tighten the band down just like that onto the pipe. Now you'll see that the pipe isn't Perfect. It's got a slight bow in it right here, and you go around here, and you can see that it is a little different. So I'm off about a sixteenth of an inch, but that's kind of common when you cut with a porta band. Now you can do it with a hacksaw, cut the pipe, and also use this same technique to square your pipe so that your flange will match up with a perfect surface. You want to make sure you have that. Now, this is how you do it. You will take and you don't leave the band on there. You're just going to take a marker and you're going to color in against the edge of the band all the area that you will grind off to get a nice, smooth, perfect surface. So when I take this off, I'll have a perfect spot. When all the black marker is gone, I'm squared. All right, guys, now what I've got here is I have the flange set in a vise. And I want it in the vise like this because I don't want to transfer all its heat away. And you'll see here in a second why. And I've set it up on level, so both directions is level. Now my pipe's been cut, and there it is. And it is smooth, and I ground back about a half inch all the way around to open the pores uh, to get the galvanizing. You know, this is galvanized. You guys be damn careful welding galvanized. Make sure you have a lot of air, and that's what we've got here, a lot of air and a vent up top. So we pull the air away the whole time we're welding. I've got my welder. This is a MiG-170 running flux core. And uh, this is in here is, uh, this is the best welding wire you will ever buy. It's not Harbor Freight, it's not Blue Demon, it's not Lincoln, it's not Hobart. It's not the new Vulcan, it is INE. So look at this picture, I'm gonna pop it up right here on the screen. And that wire in two pound packages will get you almost a third more welding ability because you don't have to worry about its strength. 
and my settings are max one for for welding basically uh eighth inch to uh, a quarter inch um that's that's typically what you're running at and i'm running it at five to get my set and then i'll run it at six when i weld okay so the first step that you do is you're going to take a torch like this now this is a benzomatic ts8000 and it has multiple adjustments and its flame <laughs> It's just ridiculous and I will put the link to this torch here below because this is the common torch most people have which is the TS 4000 and I want to show you this both of them set on high this one here is going to get you 340 degrees more temperature where you want it and you can also adjust it right here with the thumb so here we go, I'm going to heat this up and then I'll put it on there and weld it. Now, when you're welding thicker materials with a MIG, you want to preheat it to about 250 to 350 temperature Fahrenheit. I'll go ahead and fast forward this video from this point. This also cleans the metal and gets all the oils off of it. You see a little slight coloration change in the metal you're getting there. Now we're going to get our pipe and put on it. And we'll center it up very well. And then I'm going to now heat the pipe a little bit. Now this heating allows for you to use a MIG and for that weld to heavily penetrate your string. Make sure you hold your pipe well. And you're going to put your first bead as a holder. You'll get one on both sides. Now, I'm going to go ahead and spot this out, and then we'll start over when I show you the weld on it and how we're going to mount the turbine next. All right, guys, we have got the flange done, heavily welded, and pretty nice, heavy build on it. A uh, little galvanized compound, the galvanized spray on it to weatherproof it. Everything else is galvanized. So uh, one of the things I want to do is I want to tell you that before you put this turbine up, before you install it, any turbine, doesn't matter the brand, realize that it's one, it's a PMA. Two, always test before you install. Now, a lot of people say they got movement in this. And you will. You can nearly push that in. The, the uh, core that is inside here is floating. Your bearing here and your bearing here center it. Now, the reason it's like that and floating right now is that until you put this on and tighten it down, this shaft will float so that it remains suspended in the magnetic field. So don't, don't flip out thinking you got a bad generator. So one of the things we got here is we're going to test it. I've got a meter set up over here. Daniel's got the drill. He's going to spin this thing up. Now the drill is about six or 700 RPMs on high. And that is representative of about a 15 mile an hour wind. So um, this is voltage only. And you guys going to bitch about amperage. Wait till it's installed. Now, right here, any two wires, doesn't matter which ones. They could, it could be that one over there. So I could, I could hook it up anywhere. And you're gonna test it like this, these two, and then like here and over in that two, that, and then over in that wire to make sure that all three phases are intact and complete. Do not get your hands touching metal in this, okay? You will not like the results. All right, so he's gonna go ahead and spin that up. And there you go, that's perfect, perfect. We want over 20 volts and that's perfect. So. Now, got them mixed up almost. Correct me if I'm wrong. We will go to these two and do the same thing. All right, 
so you have a little higher voltage on one leg. Now that is common and not unusual. Don't panic. The typical thing is, is that the way the wiring goes in these things, one lead will have one more wrap than all the others so that they can connect them together inside the stator. All right, so we're good to go. We're looking at exactly what we want. We're gonna take the RTV. We're going to mount the flange on the bottom of the turbine. Before I do that, I'm going to drop my heavy 10 gauge wires down from these, I guess, 11 gauge. I, I mic'd them and they're like just 11 gauge. Plenty enough, plenty enough for what this is, 500 watt. Um, actually, it's plenty enough for about 850, so you're good. Now, we're gonna run these down. These are only gonna run 16 feet and then they're gonna go to eight gauge. 16 feet, then eight gauge. So I wanna, I wanna tell you that and have you very clearly understand don't run 10 gauge wires 40 feet. Massive power loss. My turbine don't work. How long are your wires? Uh, 100 feet of 22 gauge instrument wire. So I want you to figure out that you need gauge. You need heavy wires. Now 10 gauge is very sufficient for 16 to 20 feet, sometimes about 24. If you have 24 volt, you go 32 feet, no problem. Um, 48 volts, you could probably run a full 50 foot run on 10 gauge. And remember, it's lower the voltage, higher the amperage. That's how it works. Now, in this case, we're gonna run the 10s to where they come out at the bottom of this pipe here. This pipe will have it hanging out. We'll connect them to the wires going out the top of the roof of the shop to the other pipe, tuck them, roll them, put them down in here, tape them up good. And this will thread on to the top of the two inch pipe. Now that's the heavy gauge and that's what you wanna use. Once, like I said in the video, don't use the little EMT style or the, the electrical conduit schedule 40 style or the service coupling, don't use those. Now, here we go. We're going to get ours wired up and she'll be going to the roof. Tested, ready to go. The blades will be assembled and put on after it's installed on the roof because you don't want to damage them. There's the blades. There is all the rest of the gear and y'all stay tuned. We're going to get it on the roof. are a little confused about slip rings I want to show you this now I put I've already put my little bit of the uh, RTV up in there to keep the wires from to keep the wires from chafing well I want to show you look very closely at the wires I'm going to move this is the part that moves on the pole as you'll notice the wires they get twisted you understand now if I move this turbine and I'm going to hold this still and Daniel's going to lift up on the other end over there. I want you to see, see here. Go ahead and lift up Daniel. It doesn't move the wires. Hope you can see that. So what's up in here is a slip ring. The slip ring allows this to turn back and forth at this point, not this point, at this point on this bearing, on the yaw bearing. It allows it to turn back and forth and, and I'll put a link, look up here there's a video about slip rings. Right up there should be in the video. And you can click on it later. And right here, or look at the end of the video and there'll be a video I will put up about slip rings. So this has a slip ring. It will not twist its wire up. As you've seen what I did there, that will twist its wire up because of the way it's connected. But here, this part turns and it does not. That is the slip ring in the body in here, okay? The next step is we're going to paint this one. I have paint that has been up on my uh, Winmax, my HYE, for years. On the blades, everything. It's this stuff. Now this is a prototype, so it's an unlabeled prototype that was sent to me. And why not make it unique? We will paint it silver gray, I guess you call it. It's a metallic aluminum. and. Gray matter was called gray matter because I used it to raise funds for brain tumor research. My wife survived a meningioma, so it got me involved. Now, that way we don't have to change our names in here. Because that is the gray matter turbines rectifier system and fuses. We're gonna run it to those. All right, we've done our welding. And now we have a little silver turbine about a foot and a half higher than gray matter was because gray matter affected the 
power that the little billy turbine was doing and when it was in line with it it would cause a lot of prop wash that would disturb it so we fixed that problem by going higher there we go and we've got all that welded up hell of a job hauling a welder up here 35 feet off the ground it's up silver too silver gray i guess you call it aluminum so it's real pretty it's going to look sharp as hell come tomorrow winds are going to be up y'all look for the next video sunset hit me so time to go we'll see y'all in the next video y'all stay tuned and we're going to see what this thing will do in some 20 to 30 mile an hour winds all right y'all be good